Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool arcade game repair video for you this evening. Today we are beginning working on this cool Tempest arcade game. We got this in a while back. As you can see, we've got a few things in here. <laughs> this is our, uh, uh, our, sh our store has like a showroom, and then the other side is all, you know, we've got a bunch of games stored that we're working on. And this one has been in storage here for a little while, but it's time to work on it. So, we thought, hey, let's film a little bit of it so people can see what goes into these. Now, Tempest, if you uh, remember, has a color vector monitor in it. And so that adds a little bit of a challenge, rebuilding that, uh, getting the game board working. You have to work on the power supply. Then you have to work on the cosmetics and the structure of the cabinet. So this game kind of needs all of that. So we thought, hey, this might be a good one to, to film. Now, I don't think we're going to replace the side art. And uh, this thing has been water damaged, it's in pretty rough shape. But we can get it certainly looking a lot better than this. So let me, uh, I'll just show you a little overview of it. Um, coin door, control panel overlay is actually in pretty good shape. Not perfect. A little bit of wear here. But uh, it's not that bad. The marquee, a little rough. Might have to replace that. We'll see how it looks after we clean it up. Um, and then here's the main problem with the cabinet. It's been wet, so this thing has swollen up. Looks horrible. Look at the back of it. Look at that. Tempest has a drawer up here that comes out that's got all the, uh, like the light and the speakers in it. Look at that. <laughs> I don't even know how it can get this bad. I mean, they must have had it sitting somewhere where it was getting soaked for a while. People think if it gets caught in the rain, it does this. Believe me, I worked for an operator. Games get caught in the rain all the time. For it to be this bad, it was sitting in water for a long time. This took weeks, probably. So uh, that needs some work. Um, we've got some stuff going on down there. But it is complete. There's the game board. Looks pretty clean. And then here's the famous Wells Garner 6100 color vector monitor. So we'll be working on that too. So the first thing uh, that we're going to do is we're going to get it electronically working. Then we'll pass it over to Joe and have him do the cosmetic stuff. Um, but uh, electronically. So basically what we're going to do, we turn this thing on when, when, uh, when we got it. And basically, it's uh, in a test pattern, making all kinds of noise and resetting and all this kind of stuff. And uh, they're on, half of the screen is lighting up and et cetera, et cetera. So basically, uh, what we're going to do now is work on the power supply first and get it where we're getting a good solid uh, voltages over to the board before we turn it back on because the voltages may be way off and half the chips on the PCB are fried now. So on an Atari game like this, whenever the 5-volt voltage regulator shorts out it sometimes will just take the 12 volts that's the source volts that it turns into 5 volts and just short it through so everything on the board that's supposed to get 5 volts will get 12 volts that happens from time to time with these original regulator boards so we're going to check that make sure that didn't happen and see what our voltages are and of course we'll, we'll disconnect the uh, the game board before we do that but so our first step is uh, to disconnect the game board disconnect the monitor and uh, just so you don't get any errant voltages that are going to blow something up and then see what kind of uh, voltage we've got down here uh, we'll start at the power brick and replace the big blue and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that whenever we get it out so uh, that'll be next okay folks we have pulled out the power brick as it's called that is in all Atari games or all the old Atari games at least and this is what it looks like now on the top a little grungy which that cabinet is you know so we're gonna clean it up a little bit I'm not gonna go full-on restoration on it but we're gonna clean it up and we're gonna look at the mechanical stuff so basically you've got connections over here um, that should be cleaned if you look carefully you've got some corrosion on the fuse holders I'm gonna clean all that up with just a wire brush and get it where it's holding the fuses good and I'm gonna clean up these connections too 
you could actually replace that fuse block if you wanted and you could replace the uh, terminals on the end of these wires there's enough room to, for it to reach new terminals but I don't think all that's really necessary usually other people will differ what is usually necessary is this is called the big blue the famous big blue it's in the bottom of all the Atari games it's a big blue capacitor and it's used to filter one of the voltages to make it and that's the voltage that ultimately becomes the 5 volts which runs the game board so uh, you've got a bridge rectifier here that turns it into DC or some voltage in the DC and etc etc oh, anyway those caps after a while they go bad and so they're really really old so if you have a game that's giving you a lot of problems what you can do is put your meter on AC test and with the game on check on the power supply the other board they are too that we'll see show here in a second put your ground on ground and put your um, hot or your your red on uh, the I think it's 11.3 volts or 11.9 volts whatever it's marked on the uh, AR2 board and what that does is it's basically like you're putting them on this because they these connect straight to that so uh, one of those is the purple wire and one of them is the orange wire so basically you're connecting and, ch and measuring the AC ripple across this capacitor. If you get something more than about 0.5, um, whatever they call that, point, point, I guess it's a volt, 0.5 volts, which will be 500, what, megavolts? Not megavolts, millivolts, 500 millivolts. So if you get less than, if you get more than about half a volt on that, then it's, there's probably so much AC ripple that it's going to cause problems with the game running. So it'll make the game reset or not boot altogether or the, the image looks screwed up or whatever. So anyway, this is, this is a common failure point on these. What I do is I usually replace them anyway, so without even testing it, because um, you can get replacement ones fairly easily and then you don't have to worry about it. We, we're, we sell the games, so down the line, you know, we, we don't want to sell a game and then six months later somebody's having a lot of problems out of it. Um, which would be easy for us to fix, but it's at somebody's house on the other side of the state, you, you know. So we we do preventative stuff like this, so we don't have to worry about that. These are about fifteen dollars. You can get them from all over the place. Where we get ours usually is Great Plains Electronics, which is a great place to get uh, stuff like weird stuff like this, and also connectors and things like that. Ed runs that site, and he does a great job. Um, so we just bought a brand new one. I think they're about twelve dollars or fifteen dollars, something like that. Um, so we just put new ones in. So that's the first thing I want to do. And also I want to clean up those connections I was talking about. And uh, we'll try to clean up the actual power brick itself just a little bit, not too much. Um, and then we'll come back after that. All right, folks, so this is the actual power supply of the game. All Atari games, the, the old Atari games, had a, had a setup like this with the brick in the bottom that we were just messing with. And then this, uh, they call this the AR2 board, uh, audio regulator board yeah regulator audio 2 so maybe it should be called the ra2 i don't know <laughs> we always call it the ar2 it does the audio which i believe is yeah so the audio section is over here i think that's the speaker out you can see right here it says speaker 2 and this one is speaker one, I believe. Speaker one, I guess it says there. Uh, this part over here is making like the the five volt. It would help if I showed you. This part over here is making the five volts. And then I think there's also the 12 volt in there somewhere, et cetera, et cetera. And then on this end, you have a whole bunch of different voltages. So you've got negative five here. There's the 12 that I was talking about. Uh, plus 22 and minus 22 so this this particular one is is uh, making all kinds of different voltages it says this is the the uh, uh, pertinent part that, that dash o2 means that this is the second revision of this board there's about six different ones may maybe even more than that but there are different ones with different things populated so if you look uh, I, th I guess this one is fully populated or close enough maybe there's a couple things maybe a couple little voltages that are missing from it but some of these won't have anything uh, on this side and it'll just be some stuff over here etc etc so there's different ones and you can take this board out and put it in other games but it depends on the revision number 
so there's there's lists online where you can figure that out but uh, since this one has most of the stuff populated it'll probably work in all kinds of games um, but uh, basically whenever we service these the, the main thing that we're that we even pull it out for is to re-solder the solder joints so just whenever you remove these plugs you can see that they're not really fastened to the board at all so the only thing holding them on the board is the actual uh, pins themselves and so what happens over time is whenever you do that you end up breaking the solder joints underneath it so we reflow the solder joints on all these and then we replace a lot of these smaller capacitors too just because they're getting old I don't have any um, these are axial they lay down flat so there's a wire at this end and a wire at this end the ones I all the, all the ones I have are radial um, so I don't have any of those in um, to do it the right way right now I'll probably go ahead and put the radial ones in instead of wait for the uh, the, um, the kit to come in just so I can make the video but um, and these big ones here for the sound uh, a lot of times I don't replace because it doesn't have anything to do with the actual game running it's just if you get static in your sound or whatever you might need to replace these these uh, chips here with the little five legs those are your sound amps so if you if you get a game and the sound doesn't work one of these may be bad um, they're the TDA 2002 TDA 2002 which I believe check before you do this but I believe you can replace with a TDA 2003 um, not to be confused with the TDA 2020 and a TDA 2030 those are completely different I think a 2003 though is just a slightly beefier one um, and then this over here is a tip 32 this 2N 3055 this big bottle cap transistor is what makes your 5 volts like I was saying earlier when this goes bad sometimes it will just short it it makes it from the 12 volt supply sometimes it will uh just short the 12 volt through it and send everything that's supposed to get five 12 full volts so you need to check that so we're definitely going to check that and then there's a pot right here to adjust the five volts you can turn up the, the voltage once you get it in the game um, some people do what they call the sense mod i don't do that but basically this thing has a setup where it sends out five volts to the to the game board and then it has a sense line that tells it if it's getting five volts back so basically it sends five volts to the board and then another line comes back giving it five volts and it senses if the five volts is right if it's a little low it, it can turn up the voltage this is a big no-no because it, it causes all kinds of problems so what some people do is they get rid of that they do what they call they call it the sense mod I don't usually do that I just leave it the way it is and make sure everything's connected well and, and good but some people swear by it some people swear against it so you, you'll find people saying that you should do it you'll find people saying that you shouldn't do it I usually just don't do it and just clean everything up and make sure everything's making good contact if you ever get one of these on like a, a, a centipede or a dig dug seems really bad about it for some reason but if you ever get one of these on on a, uh, a certain board where this resistor here keeps burning up it has to do with that sense line uh, not the the board the game board's not making a good connection on the 5 volt or the ground or something like that um, and the way they do the sense mod is basically they just get rid of the resistor that resistor runs across from the the uh, I believe it runs from the 5 volt to the to the 5 volt return sense line there's this one right here too which may do the same thing on the ground I'm not sure but uh, the way they do it, I believe, is they just jump her over that resistor. They just connect it together with a line, but we usually don't do that. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, we're going to replace some of the caps, like I said on this one, resolder all the connectors, and then we're going to put it back in the game, and we're going to test all of our voltages with the new, with the, the uh, serviced power brick and with the serviced AR2 board. And we'll see if we've got the right voltages. If we've got the right voltages, then we can start plugging in the game board and the monitor. All right, folks. So what I have done is I went ahead and put the brick back in the bottom. Put the caps back in the thing. I have disconnected the monitor. And I've disconnected the game board. So basically... If we plug it in now, we're going to be sending power to the two power supplies, uh, the marquee light, 
and the coin door bulbs. So if we fry the marquee light or the coin door bulbs, I'm cool with it. All right, so we have it turned on. So I wrote down the power brick voltages that we're looking for. Now, it's it all comes out of this big, I'll try not to get electro killed. It all comes out of this big plug down here. But what you can do is you can test the voltages at the other end to make it a little easier. So for instance, pin four is ground and that is a purple. And then pins one, two, and three are uh, orange wires and they are 10.6 volts. So that actually goes over here. So I'm gonna, you can see the uh, purple wires there. So we're in this DC. So we're gonna check it here at the connector on the back side, which sometimes is kind of hard to do. If the wire is thick enough, you can't really get your plugs down, your uh, probe down in there. Yeah, I can't. So let me see if I can find on the actual board. All right, so it's saying 12.94, but I believe it's saying that because it's unregulated, because we don't have anything plugged in right now. So I think it's running a little high, I believe, or that may be high. I'll write it down, as it seems perhaps it shouldn't be that high. Okay, pins six and seven are the red wires, and that's 36 volts AC, which runs over to here. I think what I, what I probably should have done was just leave these unplugged. It'd be easier to get to the... Uh, pins to check the voltage. It's 35.2, close enough for government work. Uh, I probably, you shouldn't be plugging and unplugging this stuff, but I don't have the board plugged in, I don't have the monitor in, so I don't wanna hear about it. All right, so our 36 volts is fine. So now we're gonna check pins eight and nine, which is the two yellow wires, which is 6.7 volts, volts AC, which probably runs the coin door bulbs. Uh, I don't really see where they're going. That's not all that critical, so we won't worry about that too much. And then pins 11 and 10 are the AC running up to the monitor, and then 11 and 13. So that's this connector here. Basically, you just want to make sure that you're not sending like a ton of voltage to the monitor that it's not supposed to be getting. So we're going to check between, yep, we're getting 26 one way, 26 the other way. They're saying it's supposed to be 50, so it's a little bit high, but that's probably how it is, especially whenever you don't have anything plugged into it. So it appears that the power brick, at least, is putting out the right voltages. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to check uh, for the voltages coming off of the uh, AR board. So I'm going to go write those down, and I'll be right back. Oh, and I found my 6.7, and it is at 6.73. But again, that's just for the coin door bulb, so not that big of a deal. All right, so I looked up the voltages that should be coming off of the AR2 board. And uh, so now we're checking the 22 volt DC. Again, it's a little high. It's at 26 volt, but with no load, I think that might be all right. And then uh, the negative 22, well, I'm, I must be measuring the wrong thing. Oh yeah, I moved the wrong thing. Negative 22, so the 22 is looking more like 26. Let me write that down just in case it becomes an issue. You're just trying to make sure there's nothing crazy like, you know, the 5's 12 or something like that. Um, speaking of 12, so the 12 is 12.40. The negative 5 is negative 7.32. Ooh, that kind of... A little high, a little high. We're learning together, folks. Okay, that's it for that one. Then we're going to come over to this one. Um, J7, which I believe is this one. Pin 4 is the crown. And pin 5 and 6 are the 5. Let's see if I'm right. Alright, so our 5 is at 5.33. Now, I think... 
I think that drops that down a lot lower once you hook up the board. So we may be real low on the five. But we now know that the five's not crazy. The 12's not crazy. The negative five's a little crazy, but uh, I think it's going to, once it gets a load, it's going to be all right. So I am going to hook up the game board and then retest the same voltages and see where we're sitting at. I can actually test them on the, the game board here. So we'll do that next. All right, folks, we checked the edge connector. All the pins look nice and clean and everything. So we plugged her in, and uh, now we can test. This red LED shows you that your 5 volts is on. And now we can test that and see what we're at. This board's a lot better because it's got the little loops where you can actually, you know, grab it with your, your uh, probe. So that is telling me 5.13. So it did drop the 5 down a little bit, down to a, a reasonable range. Uh, that, I know it's not 5, but we like we like keeping that just a little bit high. They seem to run a little better like that. Uh, and so I'm gonna check some of these voltages over down here. So they're all kind of labeled. So this one says plus five DAC, and it's at 5.15. This one says negative 15. We're at negative 15.27. Um, let's see what else I can see. This says 6.8 volt, and it is at 6.83, so that worked out good. This one says plus 15. It's at 15.23. So I believe we're looking pretty good on our voltages. Um, hmm. All right, everything seems cool. So now I'm going to uh, go around to the front and see what kind of action we're getting and see if I can get the thing to make noises like the game's up and running or anything like that. So uh, we'll try that out. All right, so we still don't have the monitor plugged in. We're getting blinking LEDs, but they don't do anything whenever you press them. And I believe if you listen to it, it kind of just sounds like the board's resetting. So I think it's probably just watchdogging. Usually they, when they watchdog, they blink faster than that. But I don't know. Um, and if you put it in test, so the lights are out in test mode, pointing it up in test mode, gets the lights to blink again. But again, you can't start anything. So we're kind of where we need we need to plug in the monitor and hope that it doesn't uh, burn up <laughs> and see what we're looking at. So we'll try that next. All right, folks, so the monitor is up. As you can see, there's no deflection. I don't want to leave it like that for too long. We're going to try throwing it in test to see if it changes anything. Or it's in test right now. No. Yeah, that was in test. Basically, we're getting no image on the monitor and no deflection. I'm going to turn it off so it doesn't burn the tube. We've got our red LED on on the monitor board. So we're getting no deflection. So this is a, this is a great example. You might think something's wrong with the monitor, but really something's wrong with the game board. Because you know how we can't even coin it up and get it to play. The game board's not working right, so it's not sending the signal out to the monitor. So the monitor's not getting a signal it can use, and so it's not doing anything. So it looks like the monitor's messed up, but really the game board's messed up. So uh, we're going to do a little research, um, and uh, probably the next thing we're going to do is pull out this monitor, this game board, and uh, clean all of the ROMs and put them back in, because it doesn't seem like it's uh, really doing anything. That's all for this week. Join us next week for the exciting conclusion of Fixing a Tempest. Do we get there or do we fail? Leave your comments below. Make sure and subscribe to us for further videos like this. And give us a thumbs up. No comments about the goofy voice.